Good morning, and welcome to worship on this Feast of the Baptism of Our Lord. My name is Pastor Seth Novak, and on behalf of the entire community of Anu's Day, I'd like to thank you for being a part of this worship service today. Our building may be closed, but the church is still open. You can download a worship bulletin with the order of service from the link in the video description below. Before we begin today, I'd like to say a few words in light of Wednesday's events. Like many of you, I am angered and saddened and disappointed about what transpired in our nation's capital this week. Much of this last year has been marked with protests and demonstrations by people who feel frustrated and unheard. But this attempt to subvert the results of a national election with no evidence of foul play aside from the repeated and unverified remarks of the losing party marks a low point in our nation's history. The fact that our nation's leader not only refused to disavow or dissuade this action, but actually encouraged it, only heightens my frustration. Regardless of your political affiliation, I hope we can all agree that this sets a dangerous precedent for any future elections. And so I am sad, and I am angry, and I'm disappointed. But I'm also hopeful. I'm hopeful because in addition to these attempts to undermine our democracy, I saw that democracy prevail as senators and representatives reconvened after the chaos to continue doing what they have been elected to do. I saw several staunch supporters of the president push back against his bad behavior and take a stand on the side of our nation's principles. I saw this attempt to subvert the will of the people fail. And that is why I am hopeful. Our country has weathered low points before. We've faced difficulty and division in the past, even gone to war over our differences. But in spite of them, we continue to remain these United States. I am sad and I am angry and I'm disappointed. But I choose this week not to act out of those emotions. Acting out of anger and resentment and distrust is what has brought us to this place. It's what's pitted us against one another, caused us to see one another as enemies rather than siblings. I grieve this week for my country, but I also remember that my first citizenship is in another country, in the Commonwealth of God. Following the example of Christ, I choose to act out of love, to know nothing besides Jesus Christ and him crucified to borrow a phrase from St. Paul. Even sad and angry and rejected, Jesus chose to act out of love, even to the point of laying down his life for the very people who were rejecting him. I believe that this is not only the will of God for us, it is the path to abundant life for all of us and for our communities, our nations, and our world. Each of us is going to have to decide now who we're going to be in this and what we're going to do next. I encourage you, my beloved friends, my siblings in Christ, not to simply react out of anger and resentment and distrust, but to ever and only act out of love. Love not only for yourself or for your nation or for your enemy, but love for all of God's world. I can't tell you what that looks like. It's gonna look different for each of us because we all have different circumstances. All I can say is that if you wanna know what that love looks like, look to the one who is that love in the flesh. All our hope for peace lies on that one. May the grace, the peace, the healing of Christ be yours this day and every day as we look for reconciliation and justice and the commonwealth of God. Before we continue, I'd like to uh, invite you to offer up any other prayers that you'd like to uh, pray for this morning. Uh, you can leave those requests for, um, for help or prayers of joy uh, in the chat or in the comments and we will hold those in our heart as we enter into worship this morning. I invite you to turn to your bulletin as we begin our worship. 
We gather in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As part of this Thanksgiving for baptism, I'd like to invite you to find some water and to mark yourself with the sign of the cross in remembrance and in honor of your own baptism. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, creator of light and giver of goodness, your voice moves over the waters. Immerse us in your grace and transform us by your spirit, that we may follow after your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The reading today is from the first chapter of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. 
The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm going to do something a little different today. I could talk at you about what baptism means and why Jesus was baptized and how we share in that. I could point out some of the parallels between Genesis and Mark. Um, but instead, today I'm going to stop talking. And I'm just going to roll up my sleeves and I'm going to do something uh, that I think tells the story better than I could. And so I hope that you'll just trust me on this, that you'll go along, give me a chance, and pay attention and see how this sermon speaks to you.
So I'm not going to add too much to that because I think the act of creating that painting stands as a sermon on its own. Um, but I did want to lift up maybe a few things that I learned in that. First of all, is that uh, I had no idea how that was going to turn out. Um, that was as much a surprise to me as it was to you. I mean, of course, I had some ideas, right, because I picked the colors, but I had no idea how they were going to combine and mix and swirl. And that's what's really cool about this kind of painting is that it's always a surprise. And I think maybe that same thing is true of creation. Um, that creation isn't good in as much as it conforms to God's idea of what it should be beforehand, but in how it uh, surprises and delights God as it unfolds. That painting actually took about twice as long as I thought it would. And I started worrying about it getting boring for you watching. But um, if you noticed, like it was always changing and just there was almost some drama in it, right? As soon as you thought something was going to go one way, it went another. I was really disappointed when the blue in the corner went away. Um, but then it came back later as this beautiful melange of purple that just sort of spread and took over that corner. And that was really neat. You know, I thought we were done with it and then it came back. Um, you know, I think this is all says something about what creation is and does. I'd like to show you something. Um, if you've been in my office ever, you've seen these pictures on the back wall there. These are all pictures that uh, kids from our congregation have made for me. And I love them. Uh, not because they're going to be worth a lot of money someday or because uh, they're uh, such great representations of what these kids see, but because of the work and the love that went into making them. I love that each of these kids decided that they wanted to make something for me. And so every time I look at those pictures, I feel that love and that appreciation. And it reminds me of each of those kids. And that's what I love about them. That's why I hang them up. Um, and I wonder if maybe that's the kind of love that God has for creation, too. That it's not about, um, again, how good it is uh, in conforming to God's vision. But um, if God loves it simply because it belongs to God, because God made it. Think about how proud those kids are of those pictures that they made. Um, that's, I think, what God feels for us. And I think that... The reading today reminds us of that, that when Jesus comes up out of the water, he's reminded that it's not anything that he's done or his mission or anything about that that makes him God's son. He is that because he is that. And the same is true for us. God made us. We are capable of surprising and delighting God in new and wonderful ways that even God maybe can't imagine. And that's what makes us good. That's what makes us beloved. It puts a whole new spin on ideas about sin and justification and salvation. Um, and I think that's a really beautiful thing. Think about that. That God loves us. That God values us. That we are good, not because of what we do or who we become or anything about us at all, except that God made us. God poured that love and that effort into us, into our world. And God is surprised and delighted by how it unfolds.
With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, for those in need, and all of God's creation. For the whole church, its ministry, and the mission of the gospel. For the well-being of creation. For our country and its leaders. For peace and justice in the world, the nations, and those in authority, and our local community. For the poor, the oppressed, the sick, the bereaved, and the lonely. For all who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. For our new stay and for the people closest to us. For the faithful departed, into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. When we were in darkness, the light of the world came into our midst. The feast and the season of Epiphany Celebrate the coming of this light among us in the person of Jesus, who shows us the way to abundant life. One of the ways we experience and continue to share that abundant life is through the ministries of this congregation. As members and friends of Agnus Day, we gather and support one another in loving community. We worship together in the hope of healing for the pandemic and beyond. We lift up our neighbors through programs like the Fish Food Bank, Food Backpacks for Kids, and the Peninsula Gig Harbor Homelessness Coalition. We nurture the faith of Christians of all ages through forums, Sunday school, and confirmation classes. All of this and so much more is made possible by your contributions to the budget of this congregation. If you would like to join me in making sure that these and other ministries continue to grow during this pandemic, you can follow the link to the video description below to make a one-time donation or to set up a recurring gift to support On You Stay. Thank you for your dedication to this community and to this work. God's gonna trouble the water. See that host all dressed in white. God's gonna trouble the water. The leader looks like the Israelite. God's gonna trouble the water. See that band all dressed in red. God's gonna trouble the water. Looks like the band that Moses led. God's gonna trouble the water. Wait in the water. Wait in the water, children. Wait in the water. Cause God's gonna trouble the water. Look over yonder and what do I see? 
God's gonna trouble the water. The Holy Ghost are coming on me. God's gonna trouble the water. You don't believe I've been redeemed. God's gonna trouble the water. Follow me down to Jordan Stream. God's gonna trouble the water. Wade in the water. Wade in the water, children. Wade in the water. Cause God's gonna trouble the water. Cause God's gonna trouble the water. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, creator of heaven and earth. You rescued your covenant people, led them on all their journeys, and taught them by the prophets. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit in this meal, O God, and make us one in this community of faith and with your people throughout the world. Glory and praise to you, O God, author of life, word made flesh, power of the Most High, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. If you're not receiving the meal this morning, then receive this blessing. May the light of Christ shine upon you now and always. Amen. If you are receiving the meal today, hear these words of promise. This is the body of Christ, which is given for you. This is the blood of Christ, which is shed for you. <clears throat> May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in life that is abundant. Amen.
Christ Jesus, at this table we have feasted on your very life and are strengthened for our journey. Send us forth from this banquet, nourished in body and in spirit, to proclaim your good news and serve others in your name. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Before we conclude, I'd like to share just a announcement, quick announcement. Uh, next week, January 17th, um, is our congregational budget meeting. This meeting will occur over Zoom at 10.30 a.m. on Sunday morning following the premiere of our worship service. The Zoom link and password can be found in our newsletter, our bulletin, and our weekly emails. If you don't use Zoom, there's also a phone, call, a phone number that you can use to join that meeting. On Saturday the 16th at 11 a.m., our council is hosting a pre-meeting to preview the, the budget in depth. That same Zoom information will allow you to access that meeting as well. If you don't have access to a computer, uh, you can always call our church office and we'll be happy to help you uh, get that information so that you can participate. If you are a voting member of Onus Day, please make time to attend this important meeting and contribute your voice to how we discern to, use, to best use our congregation's resources to follow God's call in 2021. Once again, thank you for being a part of this worship service today. If you found today's service meaningful, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. You can also, uh, you can continue to gather right here with Anya's Day for worship every Sunday morning at 9.45 a.m. I'd also like to invite you to make Anya's Day a part of your week. On Wednesday, our weekly text study meets at 10 a.m. to look at the lessons for the coming Sunday and the Knitters Group meets at 1.30. You can find links to these Zoom gatherings and other activities happening, happening among our congregation under the Events tab on our website, onustaylutheran.org. Go in peace. Shine with the light of Christ. Amen. I'd like to invite you to share the peace of Christ with someone you know with a text or a call or an email. God bless you in your week.